One of the deepest realizations that I've had through my healing journey has been the awareness that most of my deepest blocks have been completely unconscious. This made me see how we are a robot to this internal operating system that leads us to being stuck and frustrated trying to figure out why the hell we cannot progress faster towards our goals. This lack of movement, this lack of progression, fires off all of our insecurities from the past. We start to fear our failure, or do we? What if what we're actually fearing is our greatest success? My name is Claire Williamson, AKA the Millionaire Showerman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program, the Unleashed Awakened Wealth Mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way, and I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and opportunities. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns, default expectations, and all of your programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire. The success that you have been chasing, the money that you want, the reach that you want, the authority that you want, then drop a level deeper. Drop into your unconscious body and ask how it feels about this unfamiliar realm of the unknown. And then ask yourself a final question. Do you really believe that you can handle the success that you have been asking for? Hi there, my name's Vicky. I'm kind of feeling like I'm breaking a little bit. This thing about the pressure we brought up is a real thing. When you ask that, when you ask the question, and I've been asking it of myself this last 24 hours, what am I scared of? Like, what is it? And it is the pressure. It's the pressure. It's like, what What will it take? What will I have to step up as? What does that mean? And it's pressure. Welcome to Vicky's story. Diamonds are created under pressure. Hey, Pablo's walked in now, so I've got background noise, but it's too cold to go in the other room, so I'm just going to stay okay. here. Um. Yeah, so I've had a lot coming up um, around wasting resources and making bad financial decisions because, and I wrote a post about it yesterday, like I've, I've been on this treadmill, like a hamster wheel for a long time in my life where <laughs> I'm quite irresponsible or in the past, some irresponsibility around money 
but I always get saved by the bell in the, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I used to make money. I bought my first house when I was 25. I stacked up all my credit cards, having a jolly good time. Um, then made money on the house. So then I'd pay off the debt and then repeat. So I'd have abundance, but then <laughs> always been in debt, but always have a lifeline. And it was like this all my life. And I was recalling like my father had, I saw that happen as a kid. Like he would always have this annual tax bill in his business. And I remember thinking, and he go, oh, I got the tax bill, you know? And I remember always thinking, why does he plan for that shit? Like, why does he always seem like it's a surprise? Like he knows it's coming every year. Like, and I remember thinking, this is weird. Why does he put this pressure on himself? But then he'd pull a rabbit out of his ass and he'd pay the tax bill and then on he'd go again, you know? So I saw him just, oh, with cash flow problems, cash flow problems was like the buzzword. And I remember just this horrible experience when I was 14. And I had this money sat in a savings account that my mom, I don't remember how I got it. I think my mom had given me it out of the divorce proceedings, but I had this little bit of money sat in a post office account. And my dad had asked me if he could borrow it for his tax bill. And I was like, sure, no problem, dad. And then I remember going to my mom's house and mom asking me, if she could borrow it and I was like <gasps> like you know because I think that was the story that she'd given me it but like she had this awful boyfriend and he was behind it and I was like no and I remember like I was going no and I didn't want to tell her that I promised it to dad and I was just in this awful situation and I remember she marched me to the post office my mom's normally really sweet but because she had this guy like pressing her and I remember being in the post office and literally doing a runner with my post office book out of there. And she came running after me and there just happened to be a bus coming. And I jumped on the bus and I remember being like, and, and the bus driving away from my mother and this just awful feeling of being caught between the two of them, you know? Mm. And, um, but yeah, this whole thing of feeling like, you know, my dad, my dad really needs, it and I promised him and just, so, yeah, those stories go back a long way. And then when I was in my marriage, you know, my my ex was always pulling me up on my risk-taking nature. And his take on it was that I was a financial disaster. And when I get really real with myself, like I, I, I connected that there's a real, you know, I was talking to Sally last night about the gut and the leaky gut and not being able to absorb nutrition. And then I got this like parallel of not being able to hold abundance because I leak it. Like I'm, I, I absorb it, but then I leak it. And I am that lottery winner that ends up broke two years later. So I've been feeling really triggered by, you know, I'd put, I'd even put my money into silver coins to stop myself from fucking using it, right? Because this is the pattern, but little by little, like I remember like when I first signed up the program, I cashed in some silver that went, and I cashed in some more silver and now that's gone. And it's like these boxes have just gone like dunk, 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 until there's hardly any left. And I'm like, fuck, do you know what I mean? Just fuck this shit that I keep doing. And then just to complete this story, like I kind of just was like, I just need to stop with the lifeboat, you know, like because, you know, the reason I wanted to do this in the in the first place was so that that freaking didn't happen, that I wasn't just doing this pattern again. And so I've been holding off, like doing anything with any more silver because I was just like, that's stopping, that's blocking the abundance, my lifeboat. So I mean, like this, like, you know, I don't need it. I'm going to get it. And I thought I'm going to sell 10 beta programs at 444. That's my money for the coaching. Like that's what I'd been believing into. But then that didn't happen. So I was like, okay, well, you know, now what? And like just freaking out. And I did that, what I told you, that rapid rewire around, you know, what was coming up for me about this 
situation of not having the money on the day. Like, what do I do? And I got embarrassment. So I worked through this embarrassment thing. But really, I am just like, what do I do? Like, I'm looking at this. It's 23rd now. You know, the, do I just go attempt to go sell more silver? But, like, I don't have the money there, Claire. So I'm like. It, this is like, <laughs> I'm smiling because this is perfect. Really? This is, this is, this is where you get down to the wire and you change your life yeah it's got to start by reframing it has got like you cannot if you it it is as you see it right you see it as it is it is and so if you see like you are not irresponsible you are not a risk taker if those words have negative connotations to you and associations you are you so yeah. it's like first but I do all, leak I do leak though like my avoidance of details again, like, you can't leak when there is an abundance yeah but it's kind of just like for example I fucked around with my registration on my car for so long that um because I was just being slack and then I went to re register it in March and it was freaking deregistered and I <laughs> And it's cost me three grand. So this is this again. So we are changing your life. We are identity shifting. Yeah. And you get to pull in both the quirks. Yeah. But also the habits and rituals and ways that make you the person that you know you are. Already, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you avoid because of whatever fear is hanging around. Yeah, I do. I avoid. Because it's like the scarcity that makes me avoid <laughs> creates a bigger fucking problem. Like it's, and that's been the story of my life. Like I'd avoid paying that bill, that bit. Then there's interest because I've not actually done it, you know? And so this is just, and this that, has been going on for decades. That, and that's what stopped you selling at 10 grand which would have sold all you solved all your problems right was was scarcity so it's yeah. like it is like smiling to yourself and going I'm actually done with this shit I am I'm so freaking done like I just it's actually been a really good process because yes. um because now like on a sales call it's going to feel very different because I'm just fucking done with pissing about do you know what I mean I'm really done with and that. like I said to do this like breathing into the mm, 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 like that feeling yeah and and you know Carmen was exactly where you were down to the really? line absolutely and now she pays her bills on time you know it's like there's it's it's mind-blowing the shift but she had to shift yeah with what I've got left I just went on and I today I was like okay pay that credit card pay that like just like fucking pay it Vicky you know you just pay that and then last night of course I was on the call with Sally and I was like but you're worth this Vicky this is really important and you know of course I had that whole like does this fucking make any sense what you're doing right now do you know what I mean like from a financial perspective no but from a self-worth perspective yes so I did it <clears throat> you know so it's like <laughs> but um it's and and like I said when I take distance from it I can see the I can see the journey like I can but you know yeah I just am like, yeah, I, I, I don't, I guess the words are, which is revealing the, the belief is I don't want to let you down. You're not going to let me down. Mm. This is where you have to believe because whatever you believe with conviction will manifest. Yeah, but then I wouldn't let you down because then just at the last minute try and sell silver. Do you see what I mean? Like it's like. And, and, and again, it's a reframe. 
because there is abundance like and this yes. is where we've got to shift you yes. cannot see the the silver going down 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 because it is as you see it so it's yes. scary. whereas if silver is what you want to invest in to speculate wealth then you're going to invest in more silver and it's going to go bum 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 up again right because you get to choose and this is where we start to reframe some of these belief systems we yeah. start to see ourselves like this risk taker piece and irresponsible and leaks we've got to get rid of that language yeah I know this it. is the blocks I've got that I know when you were saying about the one-on-one -on -one, I was like this is what I need to work on because I've got some deep rooted beliefs here around irresponsibility with money um but yeah but and, and and patterns and what's always happened and then believing that's going to keep happening like I, I can see it all and yeah I, I found a video yesterday of when I was with the kids 12 years ago no 12, 2012 it was so 11 years ago when I was on a one of those um hamster wheels on the park where you where you walk in the treadmill and I put the video up with the post because that's what it's felt like that's exactly what it's felt like and 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 I and I'm so wanting to to find the way off the treadmill so I can show other people the way off the treadmill because I've had so many people come to me tell me that this is what they're experiencing but that's doing the same as Judith is and pushing the horizon and trying to paddle towards the horizon instead of being in the experience that you're at all of it mm -hmm. as it is yeah and and feeling it differently yeah yeah because like I said you stop paddling gravity takes over waves move you're going to end up at the bloody horizon or the horizon's going to come to you Vicky came to me as a last resort to take her coaching business to the next level. I want to show you through Vicky's story how the fastest way to change your reality is to actually change how you feel about yourself. As we face challenges in our life and our businesses, it's so easy to see the things outside of us as the causes of our blocks. However, the truth is that you could bend reality. You could change reality in an instant if you were able to see the things that are happening outside of yourself in a completely different way. Unfortunately, your belief systems don't allow for this easy reframe. On the inside, we are too afraid of all the things that we know to see things differently. In 2022, when I completely pivoted my business, I walked away from selling, I finished up contracts with clients. There was a period of time where ends stopped meeting and I had to trust that everything was happening perfectly as it should. That everything was happening in the best way, in the perfect moment. These are affirmations you hear, right? I am a divine child in the loving arms of the universe. And all of you on the inside screams that this isn't the case, that this isn't your truth and you lack trust, but you also lack connection to your creative power. A baptism of fire, this documentary is going to show you the how, the practicality of that to help you understand why the experiences that you have had in your life make manifestation so difficult, make trusting so difficult. Hey. Hi. How is everyone? Good, thank you. This really is about creating space to see what comes through and putting a lot of focus on connecting to the truth of you. And I honestly believe that is life-changing to know that feeling of who you are and to allow the vision to come through from that feeling. Now remember your conscious mind cannot understand the journey that you guys are on. You will see patterns right in the things that you're experiencing and you have a choice as to whether respond as you always would or sit above and look back in and say is this calling me to learn something 
The 21 Day Awakening is such a beautiful tool to use as part of what I call the Quantum Leap Method. The Quantum Leap Method is a four step process. It is a method within my nine step Awakened Wealth Blueprint to take you to the income, the impact and the influence that you want. We usually get started with the Quantum Leap Method straight away once I've brought a client in and I have got them into some basic rhythms to bring coherence back to their energy body. We start to look at how we can bring the client back to their truth using tools like the 21 Day Awakening and other tools that I have created myself. I haven't done anything. I've had a very shitty couple of days, actually. It's been a while since I've felt like this. I'm in a real slump. Oh, it's been big stuff to do with Pablo, but then, and that fed into yesterday, into a, a complete donut of no one interacting in the, in, the, in the launch. I'm in that place, which doesn't happen very often, where I'm finding it difficult to even smile. Thank you for sharing. Mm, it's connected to my self-worth biggest part of myself that I haven't yet accepted is my physical appearance. Things have been not, I don't know, I felt like really distant with Pablo and things not as normal. And he normally is like the most beautiful, like accepting of me person. And he made a judgment about me not moving off the couch. Like what he sees is this person not taking care of their body. I felt hurt um, and I went into a bit of victim. I also am really aware, and I said this to him, that I it's a deep, deep wound from childhood, deep wound. And I also know that like nothing manifests in the outside that I don't already think about myself. Like, so this is like the part of my self-worth I haven't accepted about myself. So of course it's showing up. It's really got me, eh? The client starts to become aware of who they truly are. They start to see the parts of themselves that they have previously felt ashamed about or unconsciously awkward about. They start to see how this is their true self, their true essence. So it's like, actually, how can you first gift yourself grace, mm. forgive yourself, for being a human. Yeah. Connect with that little girl who is making herself known right now. I have wounds, they're still open, mm -hmm. which makes this as uncomfortable as it is an absolute gift because now you get to heal and grow. Yeah. It was like I've gone between knowing it's like a victim thing and I know I need to accept myself but do you know what I mean if there's things you can't accept then that's not good enough for me like I'm just like do you know what I mean like the parts of myself that are worthy was angry with him you've reacted because it hurt yeah and it hurt because it's nothing to do with him and no. everything to do with a gaping wound that's open yeah when you become aware of something, you open the path to healing it. You decide that the box gets open and you go in. You know, you put the snorkel on. <laughs> <laughs> or you run back to your old patterns and you ignore it and it's too uncomfortable and you play out the same ways that you've always played out and nothing changes. And the gift of putting the snorkel on taking a big deep breath and just going, do you know what we're going in? Is that you get to help other people with those stories. <clears throat> Imagine yourself in a year's time talking about the launch where your relationship met with a struggle, a struggle created from your own self-worth, how that will inspire others who in exact, there's no coincidence that's happened smack bang wallop in your launch, none at all. No because it's part of that plan unfolding for you to level up. I've been wanting to access emotions that I know that have been repressed, but I had no idea how to get to them. Your conscious mind had no idea how to get to them. Yeah, like, and probably I think there's a lot of fear. And that's the journey to find out 
because your next level is more for, for want of a better term emotionally mature yeah you know it's like one of the biggest blocks in my business was my communication and my mm -hmm. fear of confrontation and i had to own up go on the journey through the multiple that cha multiple challenges that came through and each mm -hmm. one you know instead of the old pattern shit myself run away don't communicate mm. front up to every single conversation mm. every single confrontation learn i get stuck in um allowing myself to kind of like feel and also going are you wallowing like are you in self-pity like sort your shit out I, I feel it's very aligned with the 21 day journey because when you feel those inklings of truth that's where you get to ask these questions and say okay I've got a construct here I want to break the construct that I have and I want to design a construct that feels good to me mm -hmm. and in this reframe they begin to look at their world differently for this to really work powerfully we have to release the limiting beliefs that have created how we see ourselves and our world in the first place. I talk to my clients about a ripple effect of belief, how there is usually one core limiting belief that often comes from our childhood that is absolutely the beginning of how we look out at our world and then how we operate in our world, our behaviours, our habits, our actions, our inaction. To change this ripple effect of belief, I use a process that I designed called the lens process. The lens process takes releasing a limiting belief into the body so that we're not just releasing a conscious thought or having an enlightenment, we're actually changing how we feel within our body so that we can connect to this new feeling as we go forward and create neuroplasticity of the new belief we want to set in place. Pablo introduced me to a book about the five core wounds. I don't know if you've come across that. Um, one of them is humiliation and that's my core wound. Like, that's the big one for me, humiliation. And, that, and that's why it hurt, right? When he, you took that as, you felt it, didn't you? Yeah. It was Yeah. On that level, I can take responsibility and go, yeah, I know it's my own things being reflected back at me like I can. But then this other part is just like, fuck you trying to shame me. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> that will block your money leap right there because that's a massive wall. Yeah. It can't come in with that anger. It can't. No, no. But there's an invitation to let it go and accept. That's a tapestry of creation. That is an opportunity yeah. for growth. And it comes exactly back to that average perfect day, who you are, moving your yeah. ass off that couch, not because you feel shame for sitting there, but because you're excited about life, because there's yeah. you know things that you love and you want to be experiencing them because you're energized and feeling good. And yeah. that's where you start. We always lead with vision, always. Yeah. I, in the past, I moved my body because there's a holiday coming up or I'm going somewhere and it's all about this external acceptance, actually. And that I got to the place where I realized that it has to come from how I want to feel and the energy in my body. And the byproduct is that I'm going to be actually be able to accept myself actually on the external beta as well as the internal. Not, not because that's the goal, but just because... I'm not going for that. I'm going for the energy. But now I'm the rebellious part is like going, but now if I get myself off, you're going to think that I'm doing it because of what you said. And I won't do it for you. Like I will only do it for me. It was like this. When you realized just then and you began to talk into where this is really coming from, your energy went in, like it sucked in into that mm -hmm. solar plexus so we need to move it into the heart space because the solar plexus is bringing obviously all you've got this wisdom mm -hmm. of life experience and it's coming up but it's hitting a block here it's not coming mm -hmm. into heart it's not coming into heart space so yeah. in this journey we want to be discovering allowing the whispers to come through that the conscious mind doesn't understand but then committing to what comes through. Little steps, baby steps. I haven't allowed myself to do that in the past. 
you have to ask yourself why you don't allow it. Because it feels like a little bit pathetic. You get to shatter that paradigm. It is simply a decision. This yeah. is not my truth. This is my truth. I'm going to live more into that. Thank you. That honestly has helped me so much. But really the key is the awareness and the commitment to change in spite of the discomfort. I get to grow through this. So now you're going to watch me take Vicky through the lens process to release what was really holding her back so that she could fully live into what she talks about in the chapter of her, of her book, Choosing You. Because of what she feared from her experiences in the past, she was constantly letting herself off the hook of this core value, this core message that she wants to bring to the world. She was stuck in these patterns of going all in and then pulling back and doing nothing at all. She couldn't find a healthy balance anywhere. She wanted to take her business to the next level and help her clients to take their coaching businesses from hobbies to full-time thriving businesses. But for that, she needed to be fully seen. And to be fully seen, she had to fully be able to trust in her worth. This beautifully led into the third and fourth pillars of my Quantum Leap method, where we are fully activating your gifts, awakening your inner guru, and changing the perception of everything that you see in your world so that prosperity is magnetizing to you. The Quantum Leap Method takes my clients from survival mode, surviving all of these beliefs that they have, to their full, unleashed, creative power. You know, the, these sessions here are so important because yes, it feels really uncomfortable when this stuff comes up, but it's blocking you in your business. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It really is. I feel what is going on for you right now is the breakthrough. I see it in every client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to break through. I want me to break through. Like I'm actually so over my own shit, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, Judith's a really good mirror for me actually at the moment because when I see Judith being like really emotional and letting out her frustrations, it's like that's like the repressed part of me that I won't allow. Absolutely. That's like the part of me that's like, no, you can't do that. Like like don't don't do that like and I'm not saying that to judge Judith it's like of myself it's like oh don't do that just fucking get on with it like it's you know that part of me comes through because as a child that was the pattern as a child there was no space to be emotional like the 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 languaging was or uh, if I cried which I did a lot because I was actually very sensitive as a kid and I cried a lot very easily and I used to get told to turn the waterworks off I used to get shamed <laughs> shamed that it was it was a manipulation tactic when I was actually really fucking upset do you know what I mean and then I'd get even more upset because of that feeling that they don't even realize that I'm at, like they think now I feel like judged that they think I'm a manipul I'm a manipulator I'm actually just fucking having an emotion you know? So where is that playing into the literally the steps of bringing somebody into your world as a 10K ticket, as a 10K client? There's something, I don't know what it is, but there's something that's putting my stuff to the end of the jetty. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I, I can't even touch it. I can't even know why I don't feel, why I don't really believe it can happen today in the, in the next hour. Like okay, I, So let's go to the success avatar. Let's go to, give me a picture of who you want to become. Yeah, I, w I, wa I want to be the person that's, 
got that kind of, and it sounds really egotistical, but that's kind of what I see. It's almost like that celebrity status that, um, you know, speaking on stages, got the books, you know, got the team, that whole, that's what I want. Because I know that life, although it will have its challenges, will bring me so much huge growth. The person I have to be, to be that person, um, is a person who doesn't let, you know, hasn't let herself off the hook all these little bits and pieces along the way. Like, you know, she's got through it. Okay. And, so and, seeing... and she's not in, and, and, all, and, on, and in all honesty, that woman has abundance. That woman doesn't have, she has, I guess there is some safety there as well, Claire, because that person doesn't have to worry about the small shit anymore. That person doesn't attract the small shit anymore because no. it, it, you've you've just said it, it's the letting yourself off the hook. Yeah. And that's what you've done with the silver, mm. is it's let you off the hook. And you yeah. said there is a pattern to yeah. life where, so the limiting belief is in there's a belief around the letting I can let myself off the hook yeah because the truth is I will always choose the path of least resistance why because I like easy why because I don't like discomfort why Go there. Go to where your body remembers the discomfort. Feels like panic. Like I can't breathe. Keep going. Allow the feeling to come and let it show you where you know this feeling from. I think it's a feeling of feeling trapped with no way out, like backed into a corner. I just want to scream. I just want to run away, and get out. Did you know? I want you to take yourself back to that situation you had with your mum's partner. Yeah. Did you already feel backed into the corner then? Or did that experience back you into the corner? Was that the start of this feeling like I can't get out and run? Or did you already believe that you can't get out and run and you felt some duty to lie there and experience it, even though it felt uncomfortable? No, it was more, you know, early on, like my dad was really freaking violent um and you know the the anxiety before the attack I remember one it's a really strong memory and I, I laugh about this one because I remember it so so much like I remember one time when he was like that's it you know you're gonna get it running up the stairs with my hands on my ass as I ran up the stairs protecting myself and then there's a bathroom at the top of the stairs and I ran in the bathroom and I locked the door and he said he was banging on the door and he said open the door or it's going to be worse and so I opened the door because I've always been very logical like okay like you know uh, one or two things okay I'll just take it when my brother was the opposite he would just like freaking push and push but he would always get it worse so I learned to submit I learned to submit because the pain was over faster, was was less brutal. My dad used to hit with such a force. I mean, it wasn't like the kind of domestic violence where people have been thrown around the room. It was it was hitting on the ass. But for me, it was so abusive. It was so hard and it was so intense. And he would hit me and I would look up and I would see I can see the face he he used to he used to be so proud of this he used to say 
when I'm angry, I put my tongue between my teeth because if I bite my tongue, I know I've gone too far. And I remember looking up and seeing this, this angry man, like foaming at the mouth with his tongue between his. So he was really trying to control his anger, you know, in his, but he wasn't, he wasn't. And um, he, he used to compare and, you know, I've obviously justified himself by saying how bad it was for him and how his dad used to hit him with the buckle end of the belt and how much better we had it because he was doing this. I was like, Dad, it fucking hurts. It's way too hard and it's too much. But I never said that. I never told him. I just took it. So you're letting yourself off the hook because your body feels like this is coming. This is the inevitable consequence. It's not. How do we get you to a place where your power and your worthiness is enough to know you can be in any situation in front of any person, be fully in safety, to to push a little bit somebody into their own discomfort so that they can have the breakthrough that will change their life and know that is nothing to do with you. Yeah. I think, I, you know, I know this is not really answering the question, but I've known for ages I feel so freaking blocked emotionally and so repressed. It's like I want to let it out. And I remember after my divorce, I said to my friend, I feel like there's this dam of emotions or something that needs to come, the dam needs to be pulled down and the emotions need to come out. But I don't know how. I can help you. I don't know how. And I feel like all of the the gold is on the other side of that dam, you know? (laughs) And I feel like, I get into places where I'm trying to feel emotion and I can't even access. I feel like a freaking robot sometimes, you know, it's like I, when I think about the child that I was who cried so much that I was told I was too sensitive and I cried too much and and now I can't cry. See, absolutely. And you've held that, you've held that in. (laughs) Yeah. And it's still held. And yeah. it's there in probably physical weight, physical pain. Yeah. And I and I, and it's like, how the fuck do I break the dam? Like you physically and I'm like, break it. You've got to you've got to get somatic. And that feels really uncomfortable because you were told to be quiet, keep it in. But I want you to see your father's face biting down on his tongue. What 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 if you Right now, I'm him. What have you not said to him? It's too much. Stop. Tell I'm a little stop. girl. I'm a little girl. I'm a little girl, and it's and I'm and I'm precious and I'm fragile. And you're you're hurting me. But I'm angry. I'm angry at you, and I'm taking it out on you. So sit down, shut up, and put it up with it. I'm gonna keep going. I haven't bitten my tongue yet. I don't know. I just feel helpless. I know. I don't know how to make it stop. I know, and that's why I'm keeping going. He's just bigger than me, and he doesn't listen. How do you make him listen? How do you make me listen? How do you make me stop? Because you've got a voice now. Scream. 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 (laughs) Scream. Let it out. Scream. Scream at me. I'm telling you to scream at me. I'll stop. Again. 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 That's it. Keep going. Scream, Vicky. Scream. Keep going. 
I want you to scream until it's not there. It only got so fast. My son's in the house and I'm feeling the responsibility of that. It's blocking me. Blocking you. Breathe. It's running down. It's okay. It's okay. It's just an exercise. I'm okay. It's like yeah. I knew he was going to come. Are you holding it? You're holding it because you're holding your dad. You're still holding his responsibility. You let him beat on you because somewhere in you knew he needed it. Somewhere in you didn't want to carry that burden of stopping him in that path of his destruction because you fucking love him, Vicky. You love him. I do. You and he's always love him. Freaking, he's so fucked up. <laughs> he is beautifully fucked up. It was the physical part was was bad, but the the daily the daily pressure of who I needed to be was worse. But I allow obviously I allowed that I allowed all of it. I allowed myself to bend into those shapes and and try to meet all of that pressure of expectation so that he could feel good and that he could feel proud. Yeah. And your body is pulling back and it is not willing to go into that daily pressure again. No. And the pressure of a, of a shiny high ticket 10 K client you are going to push that out with every part of your energetic being. Where you need to remember is your creative power. You need to remember, first of all, you need to forgive yourself and know that you responded in the only way that your pure, innocent heart knew how, and that was to hold that for him, to take that from him. Because you love him. You loved him and you will always love him. And that is because of how much of a diamond you are, how much worthiness you should gift yourself. But we have got to get physical in your body, scream, shout, remember your power and also move this emotion out. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I feel like I need to go somewhere away from everyone to do this like it's in the middle of the freaking you know like down at the waterfall or you know somewhere like Coyote Falls or somewhere like that where there's no people do you know what I mean like I just need to be away from everybody so I can let it out because it's why we do the retreats it's why you know you have because to- it's like now I wasn't thinking about the time I only thought of my son but now I'm like oh the windows the doors open the neighbors will be like what the fuck's going on in that house you know what I mean like that's come on in because the other week there was a massive fight in the next door's house and I could hear them and I could hear all the shouting I was like whoa look at listen to the drama and I'm like wow everyone just heard that scream because it was so loud but I didn't think about it at the time but now I'm like oh the doors open it's And can you see how that blocks unapologetic expression? Actually, even if you'd have been having a mental breakdown yesterday and sung like you were in a a fishbowl, you should be able to feel no shame about that. And Because, yeah, yeah, the story is you've got to keep it together. The story is you've got to have your shit sorted, right? I don't know if you've noticed, but you don't move much. No. You're very guarded no. with your energy. You're very guarded with your expression. It's like we've got to do the absolute opposite of that. We've got, yeah. to, get, we've got, to, stamp we've got to move your body. We've got to shake it out. We've you know what it feels breathe. like? That feels hard. Like, it does. 
it feels I, like oh fuck it's like that takes a lot of energy like that's my initial thought like with anything I, yeah and I got all this hard behind the door how much energy it would have taken to just stay safe in your body and take that beating and not just one beating Vicky over and over and over again your child is guarding herself because it's protection but there's nothing to to be need to be protected from you know it's like and this is the journey I'm at with the scale in my business scale another multi six figures and it's like see it's like damage control <laughs> like where does that open up these possibilities for minds to go off whereas really I should be dancing in the minefield going if one goes off it's all right I can grow another leg you know it's like mm. lighten up Mm, yeah know that life is is it's that it's that beautiful journey I see other people like expressing themselves really powerfully like in their body and it just looks like hard work and I just resist it like even when I've been to be a dancer and we do like dance the elements when it comes to dancing the fire I'm like oh I don't want to do that you don't and you don't know how to as well like this is an energetic expression that your body hasn't got in 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 neuroplasticity and and actually that's huge my version was when I started the self-love journey my body didn't understand the energetic expression of feeling clean which actually reflected I, I used I would go for days without a shower because I liked that feeling of neglect my body knew yeah it's like we have to forgive those versions of ourselves that didn't know and there is going to be a lot of emotion and grief that comes with that yeah I feel like it's something I've just held and avoided absolutely but because I didn't know how actually and I've done a lot of bypassing like um you know with my dad like I've done the whole like understanding it from here you know like oh you know he's narcissistic these are the patterns he can't help (laughs) it blah 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 and then grieving going through grieving on one level of one you know I wanted him to be this father and accepting he's not he's this father I went through an angry phase for a few years where I literally just want, didn't want to even speak to him. And then I got through the other side of that where I could see him as the little boy that he is. And now, I, you know, I just kind of like some of his quirks. I do kind of think, oh, there you are, you know, like I can see him like that, but still I haven't released. Your journey has to be, and this is where, and this is what I love actually, and this is what I realized in the people that do come into the accelerator actually intellectually you've done a lot of healing you've Mm. come to a very specific point but your body is still holding on to the memory as if you are that child and that is where the quantum leap comes in the income you know judith's 15k months have come when she has got war exactly where she is right now and what's interesting and what she is obviously seeing is how she swings now She'll go 15K, zero. (laughs) Because her body's so used to going back to the old way. So now we have to break that pattern, which is why you're seeing me being harsh with her. You're seeing me, I'm being very firm with her now because we have to actually, if you're going to have neuroplasticity, you have to create neuroplasticity. We can have all the tools and still not choose to use them. Still play back to our old stories. And it's really uncomfortable because it puts you out into a, you know, a massive vulnerable space where you have to step out into a world you don't know. Because I feel what she feels, but I won't allow myself. Yes. So I go, oh no, victim, victim, don't do that. Fucking pathetic. Like, don't be like that. So I just logically push it out of the way and repress because, that. Because it is a world you don't know doing the opposite. So I want to hear a commitment to to say, okay, actually, you know, that ocean of abundance and we're both there and it's this, it's the same reflection in my business. It's like, there's this level of abundance, which is scale, which is viral, which is, you know, 
uh, mm-hmm. real big notoriety that's complete and my little child self is doing is repeating the physical pattern of oh but I won't know what to do and actually it'll all go wrong and actually that'll be your fault <laughs> like to see the pattern Mm. not true it's actually as soon as you see it you go wow how do I step in my to into my creative power and lead this journey myself knowing you know knowing what I know but also embracing what I don't know and all of these parts of myself that will mean I'll be I'll be absolutely okay yeah and also having that level of trust as well that you'll only be gifted the experiences that you can so when you push that person into that financial decision that's not your career that's co-creation they're in front of you on purpose they are there to take a journey with you just like you're there to take a journey with them and with yourself this is expansion this is how growth happens this is how evolution happens it's like such a fear of (sighs) even in the breath work there's just a such a fear of the unknown you know yes and what's out and uh, there's so much control going on yeah like and and yeah and keeping safe like that's that's definitely what's the the block I think is just like a yeah it's like a safety mechanism that's trying to keep things in control and so when I can't breathe like this is why I have a huge fear of having my head underwater I do not like it because I get that feeling like I can't breathe and I start to panic the panic comes in so this is the uh, so, uh, are you going to hate me but the only way to break that is to create neuroplasticity mm-hmm so it's almost like when we hold our breath and we don't die, the brain has another wire goes down, right? Neuro, do you understand? I'm sure you you probably do. It's like how the how thoughts are created with the neural Just, glue, and that basically not fully, but I know that there's like neural pathways, and you've got the wide path that you've already gone down, and then you're building this other. So to path. build, this is huge, right? To so you've got a you've got a you've got a a belief. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have pathways going into that belief and they are stuck with neural glue. Your brain only has so much neural glue. Right. So when you have an enlightenment. Neuroplasticity happens when, okay, from this enlightenment, you take this new action. Oh, neural glue, neural pathway. That one has to fall away. Mm -hmm. Repeat again. Neural glue, neural pathway. What happens is if you have an enlightenment, but you go back to the old choice, the neural glue stays over here. These pathways stay fixed. Nothing actually changes. You just, you just more awake than you were, but nothing changes. When it comes down to the crunch, you'll just go this way because it's familiar. It's the same. It's what the brain has installed as a pathway. So to break, and this is where we go from trauma enlightenment to trauma identity shift we get uncomfortable and we do things a different way mm-hmm. utilize the enlightenment to create the neural pathway so i want you to be we need to build this out and we need to build it comfortably uncomfortable if that makes sense yeah so if i was working with you one to one what we would have is a full transformational plan across 6 to 8 weeks and I would be walking through these things with you in the accel- in the, the situation of the accelerator we're going to use the, gl- the group coaching sessions to check in and we'll build out that way right so it's just a little less done with you mm. but we can still do this but I need your commitment yeah I'm, I'm right up for it so what I've noticed what I've noticed which is beautifully you, isn't it? It's like you've gone all in this purification thing. Yeah. Which could re- could really lead back to the pattern of really failing. Yeah. So we again, we want to go to those words you use, daily pressure, is what you're trying to avoid by going all in because you think that you can skip the daily pressure and get the full whacked return in, right? I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we want to do is break it down and we want to think little steps daily, daily pressure. We want to create daily pressure. 
Yeah. And we want to actually avoid. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But you it's have funny. it in you. Yeah. So and Pablo's a perfect mirror because he does exactly the same. We've talked about how we, you know, uh, both, you know, scared of effort. It's like a fear of effort. Absolutely. So you're you're matching what you feel about yourself. You're also matching what you feel about yourself. So when I want you to really feel this, and yeah. be okay with this, that when you were crouched down and you were being beaten and you were basically doing your duty as the biological connection to your father yeah and he was you know it's almost like when people get abused well he's relieved himself I've taken that physically you know I've taken it sounds we have to get real with this stuff right it is that isn't it as yuck as that sounds it's like I've taken that I've done my duty it's like the release he's had the release he's had the relief yeah it is but you feel dirty You've worn that energy. You've worn that toxicity in your cellular being and you haven't purified it. You haven't cleared it out. It's And that's because, you know, you haven't cleared it emotionally. You haven't, do you see what I mean? It's like we're whole, and then what we do in our actions, we need to get that feeling. We match it in the feeling, right? In whatever way, whatever way that comes through. For you, that might come through ending up in the makeup trade and you know literally plastering over the feeling of it so that it looks different to how you feel well it was like I was always trying to be like I started with the teaching thing young like I got my brother and his friends in the garage and started to teach them like it was my power position that's right you know and then I became a teacher like it was like that was a safer place to be like put myself in that power position But what we want to do is come to a place of truth. And that starts with forgiveness of, you know, like really sitting down with yourself and, you know, coming to a place of peace with these memories and relationships. And we can we can just go into the lens process. We can go into the lens process a thousand times if you want to, if you have to. And to the point where you'll be able to do that in your own mind. You know, that's what happened last night with my dog. When I realized this level of innocence, when it was like this, like just a little boom, enlightenment. Hey, you should have never been there at five years old. And it was so interesting, like my dog finally in these visions, like I say, he's always a little way off. He just came bounding over to me and he rolled up onto his back and and I held him and I smelled him and I, you know, like I had him. And obviously something in my energy n- didn't feel clean enough to do you know what I mean because Uh, I was the reason that you know we lost him this stuff clings to us and it creates our reality it does and even in vision you know the feeling of holding him has changed something it's changed something massively so you can take yourself into these altered states and see whatever it takes to yeah I just had another memory come up but it's from recent because I had two miscarriages but the thing that I remembered is when I was lying in bed the first time after I'd lost the baby and I had a week between losing the baby and having the DNC is lying in bed like you were the dog like lying in bed and just thinking oh my gosh I'm never I could hear my kids playing and I'd be like I'm never going to hear you play I'm never going to hear you laugh never going to hear you cry and then I remember this was all happening and my little boy came the side of me and I was running my fingers through his hair and I was like I'm never gonna touch your hair never gonna feel like you in my arms and I've held all that grief in as well (laughs) He was just like being a child again. I couldn't even grieve trying to just walk it all away. Dark box. (laughs) 
can I offer you something? <laughs> These little boxes of silver that you've seen dwindling away. Yeah. What if they're the path to freedom from all of this that you've been holding and that it's not dwindling away at all it's been a path towards <laughs> abundance because you can't access abundance with you holding all that you're holding it on in I'm so happy to cry right now because I haven't been able to cry I haven't allowed myself to feel these I didn't even know it was when you said that story of your dog that it just took me right back to that feeling of that feeling of just wanting to put my hands through that baby's hair and not being able to. <laughs> it's so sad, right? So many women are holding this as well. It's such a taboo. It's like a taboo. It's actually, there are so many taboos. Things that we're scared to express, things that we've been through in our lives that we don't understand, can't understand, hold guilt for, hold shame for. And it's when somebody like you cracks open and shares your story and your way through that they have a moment of freedom from the feelings that they've held on to. Again, reframing, pushing them, manipulating them. Actually, you're breaking them through. Yeah. They can choose to stop that journey. They can at whatever point. And they do, as I'm realising, <laughs> you know? Yeah but actually you're gifting them the path to freedom. You're gifting them the opportunity to feel the freedom. And that's what I ultimately have. That's why I call it awakened wealth. I finally have an abundant, abundant choice in every moment. In every moment, Vicky, and you do too. Thank you, Claire. But we have to, this, this is the start. There's going to be more of this. We want there to be more of this. We want there to be more expression. We want to push through the fear your body has of physical exertion. Yeah. It's, it is. It is, a, it is a like, oh, it's hot. Oh, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. There's such resistance to that. But we have to break that resistance down in baby, very baby steps. Yeah. Can you just give me a picture? I have to go at yeah. half past because I haven't planned my trip. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I know this has been an I'm hour. Like, Where will you learn half an hour before the live video? I'm always like, what am I going to teach? Um can you give me a picture of your day, what it looks like in rhythm as it is? I'll maybe just say yesterday, eh, because that's easier to do. So yesterday, I woke up late, came on the book call, then I did the breath work in between that and our call. And then I came off that call and my boy was like, come on, we need to get ready. He wanted me to take him to employ and Zid. So I got in the shower, got ready, um, put my face on, went and did that. Then he wanted to go into Bayfair, buy some clothes. So I went in there, we got food, we came back. And then I started to go, okay, now I need to do my, then I had my cleaning, the woman who I'm going to be coaching, who's a cleaner, come. She was here. So I was doing some DMO while she was here. And then she went and then I was study. I started to go into study mode and I was learning because I was trying to think about the things I'm putting in this program. So I was pulling bits in and doing that. And I kept doing that on and off all the way through until I went to bed. Mm, do most days reflect that pattern of do you ever just stop? 
Do you have transitions? Um, no, I'm, I, I, I feel like I, the only one I have is to go to the kettle, make a tea. That's my transition. That's my thing where I break. But I've got very much like I kept, kept very much like like this and one thing but then I can also get distracted and go in different places as well like quite easily can you fill this out for me and put your results in the group um you know what's weird? Like, this is nothing related, but I was just outside taking a little video before and I saw this orb across the across it, like a little white orb. And while we've been talking, I've seen them going past the screen on over yeah, you. I'm, I'm, uh, I have a lot of orbs. Like little white orbs just yeah. going ding, ding, ding. I had a really terrifying experience, actually, before Judith had her breakthrough with her inner child very recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that her inner child kept coming to me in the night and screaming, Mum. And I would wake up and nobody would be, like, my child wasn't there. And then when she went through that breakthrough that she, you know, she hadn't used her voice to be heard and she remembered all of these, you know, it went away, it stopped. And I, I realised that, I was like, oh, you know, when you when you open the door spiritually to the other worlds, the other worlds come through and they see you as their anchor to the person who needs to see them and remember. Whoa. So I've been having all sorts of, um, yeah, I've obviously been understanding them more the more that I work with my, um, my, my guide, the uh, Franchel, her name is like physical sensations, the prickles, the, the orbs there um where was one the other day as well Karen I don't know if you watched Karen's story mm, no. after that big breakthrough that she'd had in the breath work and then there was a, a green <laughs> a green thing that just danced across her video I don't think she saw it no well this video I just took in the sky just has I did a couple and they just have this little white orb that goes ding across the sky and I was watching you and they were coming down your shoulder like like it was snowing. Looked yeah. like it was snowing. Little white ones. What is what is that? It's 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 a sign. It's it's connection. So the energy of our past is in our present. And so we can access the you call them the lower, the middle and the upper worlds at any at any at any time actually, mm -hmm. which is what we do when we close our eyes. Mm -hmm. And that was where I was reflecting to Judith. Do you know how powerful it is that you do that with your eyes open? So she's fully in the reality of the middle world. And yet she's in the past world, the future world. At the same time, it's very powerful. She doesn't see how powerful that is. We have to breathe ourselves down into a trance state to let go of the control that allows us to time travel, basically. And she just mm -hmm. does it just like that. Um, so what we're doing is we're basically becoming open, look to see what is there. And, and, you know, there's a chance that it's your babies that are there in your energy. And this is where you say, I, I will never get to run my hands through their hair. Well, actually you, you can, and you should, you know, you should take yourself there and know that energy cannot be extinguished. The fact that their hearts began to beat in the first place meant that their soul was born and their soul never dies. Their soul will always be with you. Benny is with me in soul. You know, it's like, and he's there as a messenger now. He's a spirit guide, right? And your babies are as well. I just saw another yes. one go across. I felt that one. I felt that one. Just went right across the top of the screen. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and that you know why I had to overcome that carrying burdens to have that level express of expression with this journey that I'm on with my inner shaman. 
I had to let go of that burden and say, I'm I'm here for this. This is who I am. This is a gift that I have. And, and interestingly, I didn't access it before Benny. Benny was when I when I suddenly started having this weird experience of bloody creepy children visiting me in the night and screaming <laughs> in my face. And I'm like it's been it's been scary in lots of ways, especially knowing my mum's mental illness. Yeah. And made me question, was it? Like, you know, because the things that the mind can access. Like I actually said to her, Mum, what if you're not hallucinating? And what if you're just being shown a reality that others can't see because we're meant to have a voice right now. We're meant to be leading with light. We're meant to be, you know, mm-hmm. we have this level of expression we don't express because of the feelings that we have. You have to go out into the world and share this journey that you're on to reveal, show the mirror to others that you think your worthiness is okay, but I'm going to, I'm going to call you out on that. And on a sales call, I'm going to make you uncomfortable so that you take this journey with me. Yes, you're investing 10 grand, but I'm breaking you through to freedom in your life, freedom in your relationships. It's all being mirrored in your business, all of it, every single, every single ounce of it. Yeah. So the actions from this call, number one, I want you to get on track and set those calls up this week. Get uncomfortable, make others uncomfortable, call them out. Who can you go back to? What can you put in your posts? What can you share in your stories? What can you share from your classroom? I want you to reach out to Sally, say we've had a chat and ask her to break down into bite-sized steps, this journey with the diet and the food. I want you to say to her, I literally only want to be changing three things a week and I want to build out from here. Because I've literally already, what have I done already? I have stopped the caffeine, so the headaches are really real today. Um, so I stopped the caffeine and I've stopped eating. I haven't had any any of the no foods. Like I've literally been already eating. I did, but I haven't eaten much because I I kind of I'm like so I think I need all the nutrient. The stuff hasn't arrived, so my body's t- detoxing and there's no support for it. I think is what's going it's, on. Yeah, I I agree. It's like it's going to be a direct route to a crash. So it's like, reach out to her, say, we've had a conversation. Claire is recommending that I go steady, smooth and steady, slow and steady. It might be that she says, just stick to just the caffeine right now for a week until the Mm. products arrive, you know? But it kind of feels like with the caffeine, like, because I've pulled it out before, I did it for nine months. And I feel like it's like when I went to the choose which one to take, it felt like choose yourself, choose that one. Do you know what I mean? So I've just been doing it. So I don't know. I feel like that one I want to stay with. Good. See, I want you to go. I want you to keep doing that, choosing through your feeling, yeah. and from a, from the right from a place of abundance. Yeah, it's like I'm choosing myself when I choose that one. That's how it feels because I know that um, I could the quality of my sleep will improve when I'm not having caffeine and that's a real cornerstone I think for my energy beautiful this is perfect this is already a change Mm. what I want you to do in a somatic evolution number one I want you to use the seven by seven coherence breath I want you to set an alarm three times a day like almost morning tea afternoon tea or whatever it's like it needs to break your day up. You can't run like you're running through your day till the end when you hit the floor. Even psychologically, we need to put you into a pattern of rhythms, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. You know, we do a live video. I go stare at the wall for like, and I never used to. I did the same as you. I used to run and then fall. So starting to pattern your nervous system that it knows it can exert energy and then it gets to come back in. It can exert energy and then it gets to come back. It can exert energy. 
we do have to treat ourselves yeah. like a child by the mine's way. more just like this yeah it's not like this it's no it like... needs to be like it needs to it needs to have a like an in-breath yeah no and I'm like that with my emotions it's all like that and that's what we need to do as well we need to introduce a way of yeah so this can look very small it can you can start with um when you're sitting on the couch like this running your feet at the floor like I want you to like yeah even if yeah. it's for 30 seconds like until you really feel it and then start yeah you'll feel the lactic acid I'm feeling it now yeah I want you to get a pillow at least once a day fucking scream the hell into it that's what I used to do as a kid and when I when I felt my dad had really like gone up I used to get my crew and I used to pull and have silent rages in my bedroom we want them to be they can't be silent no like actually it would be better without a pillow yeah it's like really knowing like your body wants to scream you didn't get that as a child no I had the yeah. silent teeth pull rage <laughs> and then we need a third thing that just allows you to be a little bit playful so you know for me that started with dancing yeah. now and we're doing something in the quantum portal this month where like it's again I can feel that energy again of your your orbs <laughs> It's like, it's almost like, you know, I don't know, mirroring. You can, you can, you can do something silly in the mirror and then mirror yourself back. Like just out of like curiosity, pull a face and then just pull your face back. Do you see what I mean? Or yeah. make it move in a certain way, watch it in the mirror and then as if you're mirroring it back. What would you have done as a child? You know, we didn't. Well, we did, and then we we ended up in trouble for it, and so we stopped. It was always turn the volume down, Vicky. Turn the volume down. I was always told I was too noisy, too loud. You turn know, we live, and we yeah. Start shouting at people in the house, like <laughs> you're like what? what? <laughs> Nothing. I just wanted to hear what my voice sounded like. Like I want you to be silly with this. Like you know, it's like and you're laughing, right? You're changing state. <laughs> It's like we've got to lighten up. We yeah. really have, you know. I saw that that tortoise in that vision when it was, you know, I was wanting to access the middle world, and and this tortoise was fucking chewing that sand, showing me like, <laughs> can't waste time, you idiot. Like, look at me it's even grinding my teeth. It was so painful because I had a limiting belief that the time was running out. That's not. Yeah. And so I went into somatic evolution with this tortoise and I was like lifting my, I was pretending I was a tortoise and I was lifting my foot up and he was lifting his foot up and I was putting it down and then I was lifting my other tortoise foot up and he was doing the same and I was putting it down and then I was going, and, <laughs> going. and it was all in my head, Vicky, all in my head, like, but I'm moving my body. This goes through your child's energy that is saying, don't put out any energy. Don't put out, Vicky, because you need to hold that. Yeah. It's like it's straight away a negative association with putting out because you've mm -hmm. got so much to hold. You don't mm -hmm. have to hold that. You're, no. You don't have to hold that. So you need to remind your body what it feels like to exert energy because then the body learns that it actually recovers, it refuels. You're going to have the products that's going to make a massive difference. Yeah. Nourishing yourself, really nourishing yourself. You're going to feel wild. It's like a little bit weird. And you again, you might have some weird side effects to that, some aching or because your body's just like uh, leaching out what it's been holding on to. Thank you. You better go away. Yeah, I really do need to go and like I know what I'm doing on this yeah. But if um if you need anything, reach out. Thank let's build so on it week by week. So let's just take five minutes each coaching call to check in on your say Claire, somatic evolution. What are we doing now? What are we doing next? What can yeah. I how how have you gone? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, this is good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'll speak to you soon. The universe will always bring you situations that allow you to grow and expand. In nature, if you're not growing and expanding, you're dying. So, will you look at your next challenge as an obstacle or an opportunity? And are you feeling more ready for your baptism of fire? Welcome to my documentary, A Baptism of Fire.